Hello, this is Reza Rad from Radicad, and in this video, I'm going to talk about mirroring. What is mirroring in Microsoft Fabric, how it can be used, uh, if you want to use it with Snowflake, what are the benefits of it, and how you can use mirroring in, a snow, uh, in Fabric with Snowflake to make your Power BI report uh, much faster. Let's go and check it out. So what is the mirroring? Mirroring is a, a mirroring a data source, let's say, in Microsoft Fabric is one of the features in the data warehousing workload of Fabric, which will create a replicated copy of that source. For example, when you mirror um, Snowflake database, a replicated copy of that database will be added inside uh, Microsoft Fabric. For the first time, it would be ingesting that data uh, entirely for those tables that you want. You can choose the tables or you can say the entire uh, database. And then after on, this will keep it synchronized with the data source. So if there are new records added to Snowflake, if some records are deleted, changed, those changes would be immediately, uh, or let's say near real time, um, synchronized in the mirrored uh, warehouse inside Fabric. So that mirrored warehouse inside Fabric would be like a normal uh, warehouse uh, because that data is actually getting copied in here. So, so you can use that mirrored warehouse data um, just by itself, uh, having Power BI semantic model um, with a direct lake connection because that's a warehouse like any other warehouse in Marks of Fabric, uh, and then Power BI report live connected to that, or you can use the data of that mirrored warehouse and use uh, some T-SQL cross join between tables and warehouses with this warehouse mirrored one and other warehouses and even those that are using shortcut, for example, uh, the one that um, you see over here, this is, uh, this is like the last one in the bottom here is a shortcut coming from Amazon S3. Um, and you can use all of that, merge them together, join them and do your SQL queries. In addition to that, you can then use later on notebooks on top of the semantic model related to that and, and many other things because now you have the data added inside uh, Fabric. So basically it's a copy of that data, but you don't need to worry about the, mm, the integration, about keeping it synchronized. It would save you a lot of time and a lot of money. To understand why we need mirroring or why it is good, let me uh, talk about some of the pain points that we have already um, if you are going to do analytics when your uh, source system is somewhere else. So if you are going to do analytics when your source system is somewhere else, uh, just before that I have to mention this as well, uh, mirroring is only at the moment, at the time of creating this video, available for three sources, which is uh, three relational databases, Azure Cosmos DB, Azure SQL Database, and Snowflake. Uh, other sources are coming in the future, but at the moment, these are the three available. Uh, so why should we consider mirroring? So mirroring is a, um, um, like one of the reasons uh, we need to look at it is like what are the pain points exactly we have at the moment when we have the source data somewhere else? Like no, um, not, not everyone is using Microsoft for the data analytics, right? And not everyone is using Snowflake. Like different people, different organizations are using different uh, database systems. Many of them are cloud-based these days, but still different database systems. Like someone would use a Snowflake, someone would use Azure SQL database or any other systems. Um, now, when you have your data in those places and you want to do analytics using those, let's say in Fabric, for example, you want to build Power BI reports and dashboards on top of that data, um, you have a few options. One option is to integrate that data or migrate that data, bring it inside Fabric. This data integration is a really long process. It is taking time, it is taking resources, and of course, time and resources means money. Um, so organization has to spend um, a lot of time, resources, and money to do that data integration. And it is really hard to explain the return of investment when you are doing that um, data migration. Like you spend three months, a whole team worked on this, but then what happened? You just move the data over here. And you have to take care of a lot of things. You have to make sure that it is synchronized and it's not failing the, uh, the migration, all of all those kind of things, right? Uh, so that is one of the pain points. Uh, the other thing is that you might say, well, I'll keep my data wherever it is. I'm not going to um, 
to do that uh, data integration, I would use technologies such as direct query and things like that, which would keep the data where it is. And then I would just, ju just use Power BI to view that data. Well, in that case, you are um, sacrificing performance, basically, because direct query is a slow. Uh, that is one thing. The other thing is that every time you are looking at the report, every time a user go and use a filter or a slicer, this would send extra queries to the data source. So not only you have performance issues, you would also have transactions sent to the data source um, quite often for every uh, request that the user have. And, uh, and most of the cloud-based uh, database technologies are charging you not per transaction but per the load that these transactions would cause on the uh, on the database hosting system so even you have like lots of queries coming for uh, from power bi to um, snowflake snowflake would have extra costs because you are asking their compute process to provide the result of those queries to you so performance uh, the cost and the data integration the length of the project these are three main important um, pain points when you are thinking about like doing analytics using a technology such as Power BI on top of your data, which is not inside Fabric. So what Fabric does then is that it would ease up that process. The first thing is that you have to spend no time on the data integration, like right? it just works. You connect it and it works perfectly fine. Um, no time on data integration. This is a big saving uh, by itself. Um, you are not even paying for the uh, storage in fabric for that mirrored warehouse, which is quite interesting. Um, and it is getting synchronized. So it's not just the first one offload. It is also like synchronizing it on a constant basis. It is using um, change data capture features in the source system behind the scene to do that. Uh, because it uses that, it minimizes the number of queries sent to the data source as well. So it would help with your ongoing cost with the Snowflake or any other um, cloud database system you are using. And then you have your data inside Fabric. You can use it to join with other um, data um, sources and you would have Power BI direct lake connection, which is super fast. Um, so altogether, this would help speeding up the process, um, reducing the cost, uh, and increasing the performance, which is which is quite a good thing. So now let's go and see how this works in a real world scenario. So what I have here is that I have a Snowflake database. I just created that with a trial account. A trial account usually gives you like, uh, it, at least it gave me $400 of, um, of credit. Now I can uh, go and create a database here. Uh, now I've already created a data, data, database, but let's say I would go and create a new database just for this example. Let's call it Adventure Adventure Works 2 because I already have one Adventure Works. And inside this Adventure Works 2, I'm going to go ahead and create a table. Uh, and I would create that table by loading data directly into that. So I would go ahead and say, well, create a table from a file and I would select a file here. So here I have a CSV file, which I want to use that as this um, source. So I'll go and select that file. So this is the file. I'll Add it here. Now this file has some customers, um, sample customers data. I actually created it using Copilot, uh, which is quite interesting. Now I would um, put this as a new table. Let's call it customers table. Um, and I just do a few configurations here uh, before loading it into this. So this is a CSV file I'm going to use. Um, some options here. So the first row is going to be the header row. The date format I have here is day, month, year. So once this is selected, I would just uh, load that date. 
Um, so this will load data into that table, but usually um, in real world situation, you don't need to load the data to the table to, to work on it because this is a sample data. I'm just looking at it this way. So I'll query that data so that you see what it looks like. So select, let's say 10 rows from that table, run this query, and these are some of the rows in that table. Altogether, this table has 1000 rows. If I change this to be select count star, from that table and then run it. Uh, sorry, I missed the table name, customers. And then run it, you would see that, hmm, here it is, so I have 1000 records. So this is my table and what I will do is I will go and uh, set up a warehouse to be connected to that table. So I would, uh, let's say, start a new warehouse, calling it warehouse two. Create that warehouse and then I'll go to that warehouse two and it is running, it is working fine. What I'll do is I'll go to my database, which is AdventureWorks 2, and under that tables, which is customer table, uh, and I'll make sure that this is running on that warehouse. So back to my warehouse. Here it is, my warehouse is running and everything looks fine for that warehouse. What I'll do next is I'll go to I'll go to the Power BI. So inside um, inside Power BI web, um, web portal or let's say Fabric web portal, we have the option to switch to different workloads. I'll go to the data warehousing workload and um, you have to be in a workspace, of course, that uh, allows you to do um, Microsoft Fabric objects. Um, it should be on a Fabric capacity or a trial capacity. And then when I hear I want to do the, um, the new objects, you see there are three objects for mirroring and the one that I will be using is the Snowflake. So when I click on it, I'll just need to provide the name of this mirrored Snowflake database. Let's say mirrored, mirrored, Snowflake 2, I would call it. Um, that's just the name. And then you set up the configuration, which would be connecting to that uh, Snowflake data source. So for that, you'll need to provide the, um, the address for that Snowflake data source. The address is, um, is usually the address that um, is in this format. So you would have something dot snowflake computing dot com and then your data uh, data warehouse name or, or something like that. So what I'll do is that in my case, uh, it's not sample warehouse, but it is using the same format. So what I will do is I'll copy that part from one of these. And then I would use that as a source in here. Um, so while well, this is taking time, here it is. So I'll be using this and you don't need to specify the HTTPS part of it. You can just specify this part without that uh, slash at the end, forward slash at the end. So this would be something like this. Uh, so the address would be like that. That is your account address. You mentioned the warehouse. So in my case, this is warehouse two. I'm not sure, is it a, uh, uh, warehouse two? I'm not sure, is it a case sensitive or not, but I'll try case sensitive. And then my credentials, and that's it. So let's connect. Uh, and once it is connected, you would have the uh, option to, to choose the database that you are connecting to get the data from. And once the database is selected, um, you would have the option to select the table. So I'll wait here a little bit now. I'm using the trial option and the minimum warehouse 
capacity for a snowflake that is why it is running on a slow process otherwise this usually is is much faster so the one that i'm running on is like a two dollar by hour i think the minimum snowflake configuration possible okay now i have the list of databases here i can select the database i want and then connect and then you have two options either mirror all the data in that database or just mirror a specific table which you if you choose that then you would have a list of tables which you can select and say mirror that table by itself but in this case because i just have one table under there so i'll say mirror all data now the process of mirroring starts the first time it's the first load of the data depending on the size of the data depending on the uh, configuration on the snowflake which defines the capacity you are using over there this might take some time uh, but but then um, you would have the option to monitor that replication from that point on board or you can configure it you can stop the replication you can start it you can do all sorts of configuration here um, this mirror data, data warehouse is just like a normal data warehouse inside Fabric and it comes with uh, the files stored in one lake underneath. So here if I click on monitor a replication you can see what it is going on. I can also go to, the, um, to here and say well let's go to monitoring and I can see if there are queries running in here so you can see some queries like this is a copy into query of the data loaded in into there so you can see some of these queries running behind the scene and that is the first time running that query uh, and it will run that query from that point onward so now I'll go back to here and I want to build a Power BI report on top of it. So this is of course a um, SQL, um, I mean, it's a warehouse. I can run SQL code on it by going here and choosing the SQL analytics endpoint. Uh, by clicking on that, I would have the option to run my SQL code over here in the query tab uh, from the same table that we have here. You see the customer table over here. Uh, or I can just simply go and look at the semantic model because Power BI semantic model is automatically created on top of that. You see, this is exactly the same data. I'll go to the model tab and I have just one table at the moment. This is my table, right? So I don't really need to create that semantic model, but if you have multiple tables, you can create it. You can set up the relationship, everything like that. This is using direct lake connection behind the scene. When I hover on it, uh, you notice that that direct link appears for one second in the description of that. Uh, so let's go and create a new report here. I would go and create a new report uh, from this very simple report. I wouldn't spend much time for creating that report. It would be just a report that shows me the count of uh, transactions and a couple of visuals. So uh, for the count of transactions, I'll use a card visual and let's say I'll bring first name over here and I change this to be count. So this would be not count of first name, basically this would be count of customers. Um, then I can do other things as well, like I can create a bar chart here by the job and the orders which would show something like this or another chart over here down at the bottom that shows um, orders by, by the hobbies, let's say, something like that. And finally, a pie chart by is married status and the orders, right? So something like that. Let's say this is my report. I would go ahead and save it. I'm going to call it, put it in the same workspace. I would call it report for mirrored two. Uh, and that's it. So this is my report. Now let's go back to Snowflake because I want to show you how this would work when you have changes in a Snowflake. So I'll go back to a Snowflake and uh, I'll go back to the query pane here I want to insert a couple of records because at the moment we have just uh, 1000 records in that database table so I'll go ahead and say well we want to insert record into the customer table um, I have a query for that which I'm going to use that to insert 
couple of records. Copying that query, coming and pasting it here. I uh, just make sure that I use the same name here and this is AdventureWorks 2, just to be careful. Okay, so here it is, run this. Uh, this would insert a couple of records, as you can see. Now, if I say, give me the count rows here, select count star from this table. If I just run this bit, this should give me 1002 records, right? Now let's go back into here where I have this report. Now I have to refresh the report because report is not live. If I had a um, dashboard on top of it, it would have been live and you would have seen how it is working. So I just refresh the report. I don't even need to refresh the data set. I don't need to refresh the data ingestion. All of that happens behind the scene because the data set or semantic model is using direct lake. I don't need to refresh that too. So here I just refresh the report. And as soon as that refresh is done, you see I have 1002 customers. So those records are available now over here. If I go and look at uh, the monitoring, I see that there are more things going on in the monitoring area here. So behind the scene, um, Fabric uh, is using some queries to detect when there has been change and apply that changes in the warehouse. I don't need to do anything about it. That um, replication, monitoring replication is available here. You can check it, what is going on, um, but you don't need to stop it. And the Power BI report just need to be refreshed so that you see the changes over there. So so that is how, um, how the mirroring works inside uh, Microsoft uh, Fabric, which is quite interesting um, uh, functionality. It would help you if you are using your, if you have your data outside of Microsoft Fabric, Snowflake, Azure SQL database, I would uh, strongly um, suggest you give it a try. You don't have to pay extra for that um, bit of data inside Fabric. You would of course pay for your ca Fabric capacity, but you don't pay extra for this functionality the data integration and syncing and replication, all of that is available for you for free. As you saw, I didn't wrote a single line of code. Everything is just a few clicks and it works just fine. I hope you liked this video. If you like this video, go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We have weekly videos on Power BI and Fabric. Until the next video, bye.